Segment 3, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web at ntmm.org. We're real big on community policing, and as a matter of fact, now that I think about it, so is my next guest. Yes. So you can go to caps24.org. Uh, in the 24th District, we still have a very good working CAPS program. Less people, but we still, excuse me, try to hold monthly meetings. And the commander's there quite a bit, which is very, very nice. And he even asked that you take pictures of neighborhood doings and graffiti and all the rest of it. And either email it to him or email it to caps24.org or bring it to the meeting and he'll identify it. It is a pleasure to have, a, actually speaking of not just a CAPS participant, but a former board member of Can TV, um, somebody who used to host actually the live call-in shows on Wednesdays. That like I, I used to add it on Wednesdays and that's where I originally met her. Um, although this is actually through Kelly Tarrant, who is a mutual friend. And yeah. happy birthday, Kelly, even though this won't be on for... Until after, two weeks <laughs> after her birthday of uh, May 16th. Right, and somebody, who, a PR savant, as well as a blogger, and a very charitable person involved with things like uh, Shari Tzedek Hospital, among others. The Jesse uh, White Tumblers, and you have Mr. White on as your... Uh, as a guest quite often. That's cool. He right. was here. You're 100% right. <laughs> anyway, it's a pleasure to, and she, she's a good PR person. Kathy Posner, how you doing? <laughs> nice seeing you again. And you, yeah, my blog is at kathyposner.com. Kathy where I post daily. It's a political blog. Every once in a while, though, I do something fun, but it's normally uh, uh, politics. My taking a story in the news, analyzing it, and showing how the numbers are wrong. That's uh, many times that's what it is because politicians will announce some program or some sort of numbers and say this many millions of this or this whatever and then I parse the numbers and I show how they're totally wrong like Mayor Emanuel saying that he's going to save 550 more 540 million dollars in health care costs by setting up a wellness program I spent a long time parsing all those numbers absolutely impossible well, he but is... people never question so I question my blog questions stories in the news and it's called the quintessential Kathy. Kathy, right. So it's at <laughs> kathyposner.com. Very good. As a matter of fact, when it comes to Emmanuel, he, well, basically, even though he's doing some things that I think are actually going to be very efficient, right. I uh, think that if I were to actually get him on the show and air his words to the vegetable garden, I would have nine foot tall tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not a, I have to say I've looked at his numbers too and for instance, with the police, it's very obvious right. that I'm like you're just going to be short police officers. They're going to be doing less, and there's no way in hell he's going to cover and be able to do X, Y, and Z. All he's doing is changing the names, changing the labels, and filling people's ears full of nine-foot-high tomato right. food. But it's also because we <laughs> misinterpreted when he made the statement that there'll be a thousand more policemen on the street. No. We didn't question him saying, well. We all just assumed that he meant a thousand new hires. We didn't realize that he meant he was going to steal from here and there and all over the place. So there aren't new hires. No, it, it just it's so it's it, it's interesting. We're still way too low on on police, and by the time this airs, NATO would have happened. And let's see how Chicago police yeah, handled NATO. That'll be interesting. But you know what? I, I never believed him in the first place. I didn't right. believe him during his campaigns. And frankly, he wasn't. He isn't even a real Chicagoan. Right. <laughs> You know, you know, the, the, the legal people will tell you that, that he never should have. It's got to be someplace like Chicago and Illinois where you've got a Supreme Court who are willing to basically blink it with the laws right. in order to allow him to run. But you know what? This is your, your spot. So what, what are you into these days? <laughs> well, one of the things I thought we were going to talk about was uh, the uh, June issue of Chicago Magazine. Yeah, and you're being that featured, had the, sure. Uh, that had the story of how I revealed how, you know, employees of City Club, which is a... Um, a civic group that had speakers of what was going on at City Club and I tried speaking to board members nobody would listen to me I went to the Attorney General's office with all the proof handed over to me from employees and the Attorney General basically just put everything under the table and because I felt it was an important story that's why I went to Chicago Magazine. I think that's important I mean that really is. T t so. Um City Club, I mean, I see that they sponsor things on Channel 11. I think they sponsor things on Can TV too. They used to on Can TV. They stopped Can TV after they realized that I was complaining about things that were going on. Interesting. Yeah. Because of me, they stopped, uh, they stopped the Can TV. In fact, I'm the one that created 
the commercial that ran on Channel 11, and of course, as soon as I was off the board, they immediately edited the commercial and took me out of it. <laughs> but they left Lisa Madigan in it, so the entire time her office was investigating City Club, she was running in an ad endorsing City Club on uh, Chicago Tonight. Oh boy, this is really Chicago in Illinois. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> How many times can the Attorney General be... Uh, endorsing an organization that her charitable trust bureau is supposed to be investigating. Boy, this is, uh, it, to put it modestly, unethical. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. And the only way to get that story out was through, you know, David Bernstein, who actually had, had contacted me about it because he had heard about it, and he spent nine months verifying absolutely everything, vetting everything. Their lawyers vetted everything to make sure that everything that was in print was totally legitimate. Nothing was was made up because you know you have to be afraid of. City Club is very powerful that they'd sue. Yeah, they're very powerful. They have a lot of very rich people. Right. So what kind of um, the issues on the street right now? It's on the yeah. It's on the street. They actually released it early online because they didn't want it getting you know lost in uh, in NATO. But it is, and they have the most incredible charts that they made showing the connection of. Uh, City Club President Jay Doherty with his clients and with the speakers that he brings on to make it work for his lobbying business. Wow. The charts that they did were phenomenal. I didn't, mm. you know, when I, when I saw the issue, I couldn't believe how much work uh, Chicago Magazine had done. And then City Club was very smart. They knew when it was going to be coming out because we had both been told. So they had arranged for Bruce Dold and John Cass of the trip to speak at City Club and also for... Um, the new publisher of the Sun Times to speak at City Club that would protect them from either of those newspapers, then writing about what was going on. Interesting. I'm definitely not the biggest Bruce Dole fan. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's an understatement. So, what kind of how, how have you been enjoying the reaction? Uh, or, the or reaction that I've gotten on my side has all been totally positive. I did not ask anybody to comment online on Chicago Magazine at all. So uh, I've gone and looked at it, though, and it's funny because, um, I mean, of course, 90% of it is against me. But what's funny is that someone that was positive toward me, uh, the person put something down like, well, now that we've heard from the 15 members of the board of, of directors of City Club, why don't we hear <laughs> the truth? Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I did not ask for, for comments because I didn't, on my own blog where I revealed the, the story also, I had probably 45 positive comments, nothing negative at all, but I was not going to go be pandering and saying, go write something positive about me, because I know what I did was right. Wow. You know what? No one ever sent me the link. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. I'm going to have to go read this. This you sounds to read great. ChicagoMag.com. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're not allowed to tell people to buy things on uh, buy things or whatever, but. But it's uh, free to go online. Oh, Chicago, cool. ChicagoMag.com. Yeah. Pull up the story about City Club. We'll have to check that out. That'll be cool. I definitely uh, enjoy that. So, uh, I mean, how long did it take you to really uh, find out about this? Uh, first, one employee came to me, a former executive director, told me things that was, was going on. And um, I didn't pay much attention. And then another employee came to me, and, and I started asking questions. And um, she started actually making copies of things that, that were going on in the office because a, a lobbying business was being run out of the city club, you know, not-for-profit office. And I tried talking to the board about it, and I was pretty much castigated and told to keep my mouth shut. And then I received a threatening phone call telling me I better shut up or I would be destroyed. And that's what made me go to the attorney general. Because Lovely. it made me nervous. Yeah. I, I definitely admire your courage, and Thank I'm glad you, you were able to uh, strike against them. That's the kind of thing, when people tell me things like that, that's when I have the most fun. That's why I enjoy the Silverstein so much, who like to threaten me. Yeah. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we have a back to uh, Cats that you were talking about earlier. 18th, I'm 18th District, which is yeah. uh, which is downtown, and we have a very strong district advisory council in Cats. And I've been involved since day one, since it was invented. And it's so important, and it's a shame that the cutbacks I understand that had to be made in police. So they've cut back on the Cats program. But if you don't have the local people telling the police what's going on, whistleblowing essentially on what's happening in the community, they don't know what's going on under the radar. That's exactly right. Now, there's another story I have for you, but I'm going to tell you afterwards because we're out of time. Um, if you want to read Kathy Posner's blog, right. go to... KathyPosner.com, K-A-T-H-Y-P-O-S-N-E-R.com. You can sign up, become a member of my fan club, and you'll get an email every day telling you what the blog is about. Very cool. Thank you so much, Kathy, Thank and good you. luck.